Hey, there's no better folks leading us here than uh, the, the three guys we got up here. Uh, John Booty, uh, we've become good friends, and, and over the years of, of him yelling at me and telling me that I should have looser hamstrings during calisthenics. Uh, and then Ken Harvey, the guy that I can't catch, so they put me on defense, and uh, he reminds me every day that I really shouldn't be there either. Uh, <laughs> these guys take their time to come out for a good cause, and, and I couldn't ask for a better partner than Jimmy Panetta. This is uh, somebody who I've gotten to know uh, since he got here to Congress, and you hear a lot about bipartisanship in D.C., but you know what? He lives it, and just a good guy. I couldn't ask for a better captain. I want to make sure we turn it over to, to Jimmy right now for any proper introductions that uh, he may want to make, and then we're going to let you guys hear the wisdom of Ken and John that we hear every single day. Jimmy Panetta. No, thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that, uh, that, uh, that introduction. And Jim and the Ripon Society, thank you very much for hosting this nice breakfast. It, it, it really is, you know, obviously we attend breakfasts like this uh, quite a bit, uh, but nothing beats uh, coming together on the football field, let me tell you. Um, we were just having a discussion earlier today about, you know, it, obviously uh, we appreciate, the Ripon Society, we appreciate our supporters of the congressional football game because of the donations that are actually going to worthy causes here in Washington, D.C., and, and young kids, needy kids who, who actually are, are going through health problems, who are going through housing problems, who have education problems. The money that's raised from this game actually helps the local people here in Washington, D.C., so thank you very much. But also, this is a time when you really see Democrats and Republicans come together. Uh, and we don't get that time too often here in Washington, D.C. We were talking earlier, back when uh, I was living with my father as a 21-year-old and he was in, uh, in the House of Representatives, you saw them take the time at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You knew where those members were, the house gym in the pickup basketball game. And then every night, they were tied to their cell phones. They weren't tied to going out to other receptions. They were going to dinner together. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of that. Democrats and Republicans who actually took the time, was it just part of the routine to go out to dinner and to not just get to know one another, but actually liking one another. But I admit, now it takes a little bit of work. Now it actually takes getting up in the morning and going to baseball practice or going to football practice or basically taking the, making the efforts to go to each other's districts, like, like Rodney and I have. We travel to each other's districts. Uh, and so that we can experience what the other has to do when they go home, but also why we have to vote a certain way, but also finding those areas that we can come together on. And let me tell you, the relationships that I've built from this football team, from my time in 2017, from my time in the past couple weeks on, on the field here, uh, these are everlasting relationships that we can use as we go forward in Washington, D.C. We're just lucky that we have two guys like Ken and John who can bring us together and herd the cats. Because that's what they have to do every morning on the football field. No. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But they're doing a heck of a job. Uh, it's not easy having a bunch of uh, over-the-hill members out there. Uh, but it's, but it, it makes it easier having these two guys and kind of tell us what to do and where to go. Uh, and we look forward to the game next Tuesday. We can actually, I think, get a pretty damn good shot of, of winning. And so with your support, uh, we'll be out there on the field, and uh, we'll get a W on the, on, on the board. You're darn right we will, Jimmy Panetta. Let's cheer for a win for us. Yeah, yeah. Good news is we got one of the referees for the game sitting here. We're buying him off with a little breakfast. <laughs> Westerman, you're going to be, he's going to be here next, he's going to be here all week, right? So who's got dinner tonight? Keeping a close eye on him. He's, he's got to go call an SEC game this weekend, but we'll get him back up here next week. Well, hey, good luck. Make sure you come back fully, fully. I got him. I'm not forgetting him. <laughs> Don't you worry about Billy. He, he always gets a special signal announcement. Hey, SEC, remember, they can't bribe you there, but we can't hear. This is Congress. <laughs> <laughs> hey. right. You know, there, the reason why we got a chance to meet Ken Harvey and John Booty is because of their work with the Sports Fitness and Industry Association. And there's one unsung hero around here with all of these athletic events that we, we participate in, and that's Bill Sells. Bill's the one that gets us the cool jerseys with our name and the right number on it. You know, if you don't get the right stuff on, we don't, we, we, we're very unhappy about that. Uh, but you know what? Bill's the guy who's out at practice every morning. 
He's out of practice when we're there in baseball, which starts even earlier than football. But thanks for what you do. I've gotten to meet so many good people in the world of athletics. Folks that I grew up like Ken and John watching on TV because they didn't play on my favorite team, rooting against. Uh, <laughs> and every morning I root against them again to show up. It, clearly, clearly. Uh, but I want to start with John Booty. John, John was somebody that uh, you know taught me early on. You, know, you were talking about herding cats. I thought you said herding calves. Right? Oh, he, he hurts my calves at every practice. But if we didn't have these guys out here, we wouldn't have a successful game. And in turn, we wouldn't have a, su a successful charity event. John, give us your opinion on not how bad we are, but how good we're going to be Tuesday. Well, I like the team effort. I like the effort that you guys are giving every morning. Just showing up is a big part of it. And we have you guys come out every morning, those who are there, just to show uh, that you're ready to, to compete. You two, sometimes y'all intimidate me when you look out at me. I will feel like, who is this guy? He can talk to me like that. But, you know, they look at it like, we want to win this game for the causes. You know, we got the charities, but we want the trophy. And uh, this year, I feel more confident that we can win this football game because our defense looks good. Offense, we just gonna matriculate down the field, <laughs> and we're gonna make some plays and win this football game. But you guys have been doing well. Uh, we got a few injuries that we got to overcome, and uh, go from there. Now, can I take one moment? I want to take one moment and thank uh, the National Football League. Yeah, Man, here, they here. have been. <laughs> Connecting in the National Football League, they doing it up for us this year. It's the hundredth season of the National Football League, and Ken and I we put in 19 years of it, of those seasons. Right, Ken? Eight mine and 11 for Ken. So we want to thank you all for uh, uh, your support. And I gotta say, Bogart, Jennifer Bogart, fantastic group. Here, here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you for allowing me to come in. But uh, what, going back to the players. Look at them. Look around. They're here. They ready. <laughs> they are R E A D Y ready. So I'm going to leave it alone. Let Ken go ahead and take over. The man who screams at me and Jimmy every single day. You know Ken what? Hart. Thank you. Um, I can do this speech and sound like a coach, or I can do it and sound like myself. I even think there's great players out there. And I feel confident that we're going to win this game. Hurrah, hurrah. You know, look, we're here, and and to me, I'm amazed, and I'm hoping I'm speaking for John also, that we have an opportunity through the, the, the sports, through sports, to work with some of the highest members, you know, on the Hill, to be, be with Congress members, and for them to take the time to be out here to do something for charity. You know, so many times in life we get, we, we judge things in a flash. You know, you look at a person and you judge them. You look at a situation and you judge it, and... When you get a chance to really meet somebody, you get a chance to talk to people, you realize they're not all that you thought they were. That's, a, that's the beauty of sports. Uh, I came from Texas, John's from Texas. You know, in Texas, you, you meet a guy with a scraggly beard and, and a cowboy hat and some chew in his mouth, I might go the other way. But then you start playing with that guy and you realize he's a good guy. And, and he realizes you're a good guy. And all of a sudden, all the barriers, all the misconceptions are broken and you have a conversation with that person. That's the power of sports. And so when we're on this game, when we're playing this game, you have Democrats and Republicans playing together, you realize the beauty of it and that we can, we can do things together and you see the person first before you see any type of affiliation. And so uh, I, I'm honored, uh, we're honored to be a part of this game. Thank you guys for having us here. And uh, you know, I got the mic, so I love talking, so you may have to take it back. <laughs> oh. And you know, the media was out of practice today, but. I don't know if anybody got any camera time. Ken was Ken was there the entire time. He started yeah. it out. Yeah. He. Uh, I cut off my sleeves on my shirt. I was like, I was all. <laughs> what do you need? Uh, <laughs> that was the first time I've seen Ken catch a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I hope they got that on video. I want to see that. Hey, listen. Use his face. Even, so, that's a good thing. <laughs> so you guys get to see now what we experience at 7 a.m. every morning. But because of this breakfast. 6.30 this morning, yeah. so we make sure we get it. You know, we've had a lot of injuries over the years, and i got to thank some of the folks who started this game. Remember, Bill Schuster got his ear, half of it, torn off in one of the games. 
Uh, I was with Sam Graves last night. Sam talked about that same game where they sat at the tune-in after the game, and Sam had a, a towel on his lip because he took a shot to the mouth as he's drinking a beer, and he looks over at Schuster, who's got a towel on half his ear. <laughs> and he said, that's the last time I'm ever playing in this game. <laughs> Schuster wasn't that smart. I know we're, we're okay with that, but Schuster came back. But those are the guys that helped us get going, too. And, and we can't, we owe a debt of gratitude to the folks who still come back, too. Right. And because we couldn't get Pete Sessions again this year, uh, we got our second round choice. Yeah, we got a second round choice. We got a second round Something choice. Drill. Yep. Uh, Bob Dole, uh, who's, who's back. I mean, Bob has been a quarterback. He's coming back to play quarterback. Oh, this wow. is a guy who understands that it's about camaraderie and it's about actually making some money for local DC charities, too. You know, the charities aside, these guys, Jennifer and everybody comes together to raise a lot of money. We had a great reception the other day. And we're looking at over $300,000 for this game, which is, I think last year it was 187. So we're already there. We're already, we've already exceeded our goal, but that doesn't mean stop now. We want you guys to make sure we come out and play. But Ken and John, you guys live here in the DC area. Jimmy and I, we do not. Tell us what a game like this means to the local youth in this community. It means a whole lot. Now, as young kids are able to see grown men and women out on the football field being active, that's encouragement for them to stay active. And also to be a part of a team. It's a team effort. You know, we use America's game to play a game. Uh, as a team, the youth will see that and say, listen, one day, if I can see Congressman Davis running around the field at his age. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> Walking very fast. And Mr. Panetta, you know, he's shutting down corner, shutting down corner over here. I can do that. Or Ken or myself. We try to struggle to get down the field. I can do that. So that team effort, encouragement, that's what we that the kids love. They want to see encouragement and they see us out there, they're gonna be encouraged. Well I think, you know, and I, I try to get too deep sometimes, but you know, I, I'm on the I'm on the belief now. Use what's in your in your hands. And if we're teaching any kid, it's you have power within yourself. Whatever ability you have, you can do. So for John and I, you know, you think football it's over with, and you think that's the end of your football career. But here we are doing this later in life, and and that's the kind of belief that no matter who you are or where you are, you have a gift and a skill and a blessing. That's you. Figure out what it is and use it to its full potential because you never know where it's going to take you. So if there's a message for any little kid, it is that, uh, you know, whatever you have is your skill, your gift, your blessing. Use it to its full potential. Here we are. And I say it with great admiration. We're with Congress members. I mean, as a kid growing up, you say, man, these are Congress members. Wow. It seemed like so far away. Right. But here you are playing with them because of a sport that we played and we enjoyed. So, um, you know, the, if it's a message for the kids... Use it yet. Well, well, trust me, I think Jimmy can attest. I think we're a lot more excited to be around pro athletes. <laughs> and, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, speaking of has uh, you know, look, you don't just have John and Ken out there with us as coaches. We actually get to play with some uh, retired professionals who, yes, they actually help us out quite a bit, and they're going to help uh, tremendously get that W. Uh, Brett Smoot, uh, Santana Moss, Gary Clark, Herschel Walker's coming out. On uh, some others, uh, but like I said, I mean, it's the kids. It's great to see. Uh, it's first of all, it's great for the kids who are there to see those pros and see Ken and John. But it's also amazing to play with these pros because you just get a sense of the explosion and the grace that these men bring. I'm not a pro, Jimmy. I, mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's why I didn't mention your name. Oh, oh. But, 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 but no, but it's it, actually cool because you get to see them. What slow motion looks like. <laughs> oh, God, God, God. You know, they say, go in slow motion. No, no, we mean full speed then. <laughs> and with that, with the kids, we have the NFL play, uh, football clinic before the game. And so if you have kids that want to participate in that clinic, it starts at 545, they gather you that, and, and uh, bring the kids out. They will enjoy it. The NFL does a fact, and USA football does a fantastic job. In, and uh, getting the kids together out there on the field and giving them the experience, it was uh, and, and learning learning the right way. I mean, ultimately, the game the game of football is about technique, and you want to you want to perfect the technique and do it the right way. So it's to have fun, but also learn learn the proper way to tackle, learn the proper way to do things, 
and then enjoy yourself because it is a great way to get together. See, see Ken and I played back in the day when we, we folded our helmets and put them in our back pockets. So uh, Bill has some <laughs> Bill has some headgear for us this year if you want to wear it. So we will have headgear out there if you want to wear the headgear. There is some neat headgear. I mean, if Jimmy and I are thinking Michael Dukakis moments. But but you know what? I look around at our team and I. I just wonder how smart we'd be, all be if we'd have had those when we were kids. <laughs> Imagine what we could do for the NFL and for our country if we'd have had concussion protection on the playground. Right, right. Hey, uh, hey, listen, we, we've got so many good people that, that are playing too. So if you run into a Mark Wayne Moe, uh, mm -hmm. Tim Burchett, freshman out of Tennessee, is out there, one of the funniest guys you'll ever get a chance to talk to. Uh, Tom Malinowski, uh, come out, he's excited. Uh, you know what? We, we we have some injuries with different members. Uh, Mark Walker's playing. Who else did I forget? Luke Correa. Uh, Bobby, who, who am I forgetting? Oh, Dean Phillips is out there. Mark VC. Nanette, Nanette Berrigan. Yeah. You know, the good news is it's always fun because sometimes you get a chance to, to get back at the pros for harassing you. You know, like last year's game. Uh, I don't know if John can remember this or not, but I certainly do. Uh, you know, we're down by one touchdown. I look over in the fourth quarter and I got a, a good number of our pros on the side. I'm like, hey guys, you're gonna need to get in. Oh no. <laughs> Cavs. Oh, 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 oh. Santana Moss pulls a cap. And I Jimmy and I are fine. We don't run fast enough to pull a cap. I, I, Gary Clark. Gary Clark had it stuff. Yeah, so John's job over the offseason, and this there is truly an offseason at this one has been to make sure that those two guys actually have calves for the fourth quarter. He sent me pictures of him training Santana Moss this year. So thanks for taking it serious, Coach. He's serious. We want to win this game. I, I guarantee you, give him a contract. Those calves are just a good oh, yeah. He's happy. <laughs> I can run. Ken, you understand that, don't you? Yeah. We understand that big time. Give us a contract. We were right. Then. I, I do the pain. Amazing how, how flexible they are when you got that contract. Overnight, overnight. <laughs> it heals overnight, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm glad somebody mentioned the NFL. Jimmy, I think you were the one who brought it up earlier. You may want to say something. We got our fantasy team uh, list for Kenneth so that uh, we make sure they don't ever get suspended. Look at you, Is it run by John Runyon? The dirtiest player in the NFL, Dallas and Tom. The dirtiest guy. Yeah. Well, you have two more of your play. Steve Stivers has a question for you guys. Uh, Mr. Bacon just uh, arrived, so welcome to our other uh, Thank you. We've got questions. Push-ups. Push-ups, you grab. Push late. Late. Five push-ups. Five push-ups. <laughs> you look too good. You arrived late. You got to go. Right here. Right here. Get a picture of this. One, two, three, four, five. Five push-ups. Five push-ups. Five push-ups. Five push-ups. That is the goal. When you show up late, you have to do push-ups. <laughs> Did anybody else show up late? Yeah. Huh? Everybody's here. Steve Stivers did. Did anybody show up late? I was here late. <laughs> All right. What's oh! The general. Oh. All the general. All the general. Hey, everybody be very quiet. We'll hear the pop. Two, three, four. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Real slow. No one has to We mean what we say. Good so job, Steve. Who's got a question? When you catch your breath, you can ask. Good, the question. good. <laughs> He's so, good. You talked about it earlier, but uh, you know, how does the football game help you guys build bipartisan relationships, Jimmy and and to? Uh, yeah, like I said, a, a lot of my friendships with uh, here on Capitol Hill, especially with Republicans, stem from my time in 2017 going out there on the field, and then it carried over into our daily job here, and then with this team in 2019. So it, it's, like I said, it's it's something that, uh, it, it takes time to build, but it's it's damn well worth it. Can I jump in real quick, sorry. But, and I said this a lot to so people probably tired of it, but if you look at a football game, 
You'll never win a game with just a powerful offense or just a powerful defense or just a powerful special teams, right? Everyone has to work together. And even if the, the, the offense is a little bit more powerful than the defense, whatever, you'll never win a game with just one segment of that group. They have to learn to work together. And that's what we try to build here is that everyone has to learn to work together in order to achieve that goal. It's not just a certain group. And even, I'm, I'm sorry, you cut it. Even with just that, Ken, as well, the, the front office, you know, the people at the top, the general managers, the owners of the football teams, you got to have a winning culture and everybody doing their jobs, doing their jobs and coming together. A lot of different uh, people come in, in the National Football League on each team, but they got to believe in that system to win. And uh, with the special teams, and offense, defense, coaches, but it starts at the top as well. Everybody coming together with that common goal to win football games and win in life. You know, helping each other, working with each other. That's how you do it. Working with each other. That's the key. Who's who's got another question? Anybody? Yep. Ralph Hellman, right over here. Hey, Ralph. Great. Hey, hey, Ralph. How are you? Hey, Ralph. So last year's uh, game was a defensive. That's a struggle. Uh, and we've got would have been an offensive juggernaut in the fourth quarter, but we've got a, we've got a golden arm back. Golden arm. We've back. got a uh, new great coaching with uh, amazing athletes who hopefully have calves that can participate in the fourth quarter. So how are we going to score points, and uh, who are going to be our offensive superstars? I will say first step is to get on your knees and pray. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm defense, so I'll let you guys. <laughs> they say they say defense win championships. We just need to score one time, right? One time. We need six points. If we score six points defense, don't let us down. Oh, oh, thank you, John. Thank you. you know, one offensive guy, three defensive guys. I thought six to nothing against some really good Capitol Police athletes. Right, exactly. They they may wear a lot of bulky stuff out there. They're really good. And, and look, we've done everything humanly possible to win this game, right? First, we, we start as a certain age group. Then it was like two hand, it was, it was flag football, and we're like, ah, well, let's make it two hand touch. Well, no, let's make it one hand touch. Everything humanly possible to try to win this game. So, so yeah, this year, I mean, I, and I, I say this with all honesty the guys that are out there, the guys, girls, uh, for means everybody, but the attitude, the speed, the intensity. I think it's going to be a really good game, and, and so I'm excited to see what uh, what happens when it when it gets turned up a notch. And, and I know one thing: our quarterback, who is returning, you know, supplemental uh, draft quarterback, he can have a little attitude if he drop one of his passes. So he will. Don't drop it again, John. <laughs> that was Gary. It wasn't me, was it? Well, Gary dropped it in the end zone. Yours was down the field. What a great memory he has. <laughs> No, not that time. <laughs> no, it was just right here. Who's got a question back there? Okay. Go ahead. Hi. Um, how many female members are on the team? How many female members are on the team? Well, Donna, uh, Donna yeah. has been there for the last uh, the, the three games that I've played. She used to play for a women's professional team here. So the, the D.C. Uh, Divas. D.C. Divas. Uh, she, trust me. These guys are happy she's on our defense because she's very good, a lot faster than us. Uh, Nanette Berrigan plays. Uh, you know, we had some more women Katie during Hill. the Katie Hill. Katie Hill is going to be on the team. Uh, Got to get her to practice. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple new sheriffs in town when it comes to practice, when it comes to really a focus on uh, uh, winning. For the charities, we lost. We, we had Martha McSally, but uh, she went on to the other side. Unfortunately, she's she's on a different schedule now. Yeah, but, but it's, it's open. Schedule. It's open to all everyone. So, yeah. and you know them. what? And we want to have we we actually recruit. Jimmy and I go around on the house floor and recruit as many players as we can. Even we tell them if you don't want to play, come hang out on the sidelines. Help us out for the charity. Get the camaraderie. Uh, we'd love to have some more folks out there, uh, but also, uh, you know. We're a little competitive. I hate getting taunted by the Capitol Police walking to and from folks. Don't you, Jimmy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they do it, too. <laughs> right. They make us go through extra security. We now have We now have two former professional football players in Congress. 
They get the same exemption as Santana, Moss, and Gary Clark. They don't have to come to practice. But when you asked about the offense earlier, imagine our supplemental draft choice there, throwing to an offense that has John Booty at one receiver, Gary Clark, Super Bowl champ, uh, although he did drop that pass in the end zone. <laughs> Hit him in the hands. Uh, <laughs> Santana Moss and Anthony Gonzalez. Now, you notice I'm not mentioned on offense because they used yeah. to call me Roberto Duran, hands of stones. I couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't catch a cold by He catch better with his feet. <laughs> I, I, I hate to do oh, this what? to you, oh. but um, I have to make sure I don't really upset any of the executive assistant schedulers. And right now, there's a number of you that are running way behind. Whoa, we're out. Oh. Jimmy, Rodney, Don. Thank you very much, John. Everyone. Thank you very much. Good luck next week.